Thanks for joining us, worship. I hope you engaged during worship and really spent the time to honor the Lord in song and in praise. And right now we're going to jump into the Word, and I hope you're going to be blessed by it. I get the, the privilege and the opportunity to share it with you this morning. So sit back, pull out your notepad, your pen, and let's take some notes and your Bible. Don't forget your Bible, and let's jump right into this. The title of my message seems a little funny, but it's, it's not super funny when we get into it. But it is funny at the beginning. <laughs> it's monkey see, monkey do. All right, with the idea that what we see is what we're going to do. Amen? So, uh, Galatians 3.28, it says, There's neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither slave nor free, there's no male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. We are all one in Christ Jesus, and we can say amen to that. My first point is how we look at someone will greatly influence our response to them or how we treat them is another way of saying it. And so before we jump into this, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for who you are. We thank you for our time together. We thank you that we have this opportunity to come before you, to worship you, to honor you, to bless you, to learn from your word. We have the opportunity to apply it to our lives, to not just be hearers of the word, but be doers of the word. And it's the challenge to us all that we not just be hearers, but we'd be doers. And so we thank you for your promises. We thank you for your blessings in our lives. We thank you for your sacrifice. We honor, we bless you. We pray for every single person that is watching this this morning that you will bless them, that you will open up their heart to receive what you have in store for them. And we honor you and bless you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. So how we look at somebody greatly influences the way that we respond or treat that person. You know, well, if you know myself, I'm married to uh, Mickey Ann uh, Asato. Her, that's her maiden name, if you know her by that, but she is now Mickey Ann Fetelvero, and we're different. We're very, very different, okay? When we're dating, uh, our differences didn't seem that, that big of a deal. <laughs> now, our differences are just straight up annoying. <laughs> And, you know, my wife is watching this right now, and she's going to agree. She's, she's sitting at home doing this. Yup. He's annoying. And I'm over here saying, yup, she's annoying. <laughs> you throw a kid in there, boom. Everything goes out the door. <laughs> and it just escalates. But I see that because, you know, during, during that dating period, you, you, we looked past we glazed over the differences. We glazed over those little uh, idiosyncrasies that you know, normally would irritate us because all we were thinking about is how much you care for the person, how much I love you. And you see, you just get blinded by love and you can't see anything else but just how beautiful she is, how good she smells, how nice her hair is. You just get blinded. You don't see it. Then... When, when the makeup's off and she's lounging around in her sweats and her yoga pants and she's eating ice cream off her belly. I'm joking. I don't think she's, she's, she hasn't done that. <laughs> but get, I'm painting a picture here, okay? So she now kind of lets loose. I let loose and we see, and we see everything. And now we have to deal with it. Okay, <laughs> we, what we saw, how we saw, really I should say, because we kind of see it, but we don't really know. So it's how we look at each other has changed over the time. It changed since dating in, and now being married. And even though our differences are difficult to deal with, we annoy each other. We get on each other's nerves. Together, we paint a beautiful picture of God. 
our marriage paints a picture, a more complete picture of who God is. And that's the beauty of it. Men, all, all the married people are going, amen. Turn to your spouse and give them a kiss and say, I'm thankful for you. I honor you. I love you because you and me, we show Christ. So turn to, your, turn to your spouse and say that. If your spouse is not watching with you, pause and grab him. Grab her. Sit her down. Tell her to stop doing the dishes. Stop reading a book. Or to the guys, stop working on something. Sit down and enjoy this time together. You're in church. Amen? <laughs> so, what is the solution? So if we're having a hard time seeing, seeing a person in a certain way or loving a person, what is the solution to that? And really the solution is we're, we need to change our focus from looking at the person to looking at God. God needs to be the focal point. God needs to, to be the lens that we look through everything in our world, everything in our lives through. Amen. And it's, sometimes it's a really hard thing because we're human. We fail, we, we judge, and we think of all the different ways that somebody has hurt us or has uh, lied to us or done something bad to us. And it's hard to see that person through, through the lens of God. But that is, it's a really good challenge to us all. And that's what God wants us to do. Amen. Number two is that we all have intrinsic value. You, me, we all have value. And it's given to us by God. What we wear, how much money we make, where, where we work, who we're friends with, what kind of car you drive, doesn't mean anything. That does not give you value. Your value is based and is given to you by God and only through Him. Everything else is it's garbage. It means nothing. Your value is given to you by God because we're created in His image. Amen? And when we look at the intrinsic value, the value of every human being, every person, that begins to change the way we act and begins to change the way we do things. And we, the way we respond to them. And just taking our spouse, for example, when, when I look at Mickey, it's, it's my goal to not look at the, the irritating things. It's not to look at the, the hard things to deal with, but rather to look when I see her and to look at her and to really look at her, that I see the face of God, that I see her value, her intrinsic value, her God-given value, that she is valuable, that she is precious. Because when I can look at that, when I can, when I can see God's face and God's spirit with inside of her, it changes the way that I feel. No, it, it's harder to stay mad. It's harder to stay irritated. It's harder to be upset when I, can, when I look at her and I see God in her face. When I look at her and I see the spirit of God within her and the value that she is and how much God cares about her and loves her, it's hard for me to stay angry. It's hard for me to stay judgmental. It's hard for me to stay irritated during those times. And it's a challenge. I'm not going to lie, it's a challenge. And we all have that challenge, but it's something that God has called us to. In Genesis 32, we see a, a really good picture of this in the life of Jacob. And just to give you a little bit of backstory, so Jacob, he stole his brother's blessing because Jacob was the second, second son. He wasn't the oldest. He, so he stole the firstborn blessing 
from his bro brother Esau. And his brother Esau also traded away his birthright for a bowl of soup to Jacob. And so he got, he got everything out of, out of the family and not Esau. Because that, that's important for what comes next. He leaves, he goes to Laban, he marries uh, his daughters, builds a family, acquires much stuff, and then ends up leaving. Is called back out to go back to the land that he is from. And this is where it kind of uh, picks up. So in Genesis 32, verse 17 to 21, says he, he instructed the first, when Esau, my brother, meets you and asks you, to whom you belong, where are you going, and whose are these ahead of you? Then you shall say, they belong to your servant Jacob. They are a present sent to my Lord Esau, and moreover, he is behind us. He likewise instructed the second and the third and all who followed the droves. You shall say the same thing to Esau when you find him, and you shall say, moreover, your servant Jacob is behind us. For he thought, I may appease him with the present that goes ahead of me, and afterward I shall see his face. Perhaps he will accept me. So the present passed up on ahead of him, and he himself stayed that night in the camp. Jacob was afraid that Esau was going to kill him. He was going to kill him. He was going to kill his family for stealing his blessing and for tricking him of his birthright. And he is right, rightfully so to be afraid. Because back in those days, in that time, that was a big deal for them to get the birthright, and to get the blessing. It was a big deal. And he took that from Esau. His fear led him to send these gifts, send these presents to his brother in order to appease him, to appease him so that he wouldn't do harm to him. Because when Jacob looked at his brother, he saw the person that could want to kill him or may want to kill him. Let's read a little bit more. So verse 24 to 30. And Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of its joint. As he wrestled with him, then he said, Let me go, for the day has broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with man and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask me my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, saying, for I have seen God face to face. And yet my life has been delivered. In that interaction with that man, he didn't know it was the Lord. He didn't know it was God. But in that interaction with him, he saw the face of God within a man, within human form. His interaction with him changed his perspective, changed the way that he saw things, changed the way that he's going to do things as we're going to read. Hey. At first, Jacob was afraid. He was afraid of his brother that he was going to kill him. Right? He meets God face to face, sees him, survives. Now he's about to meet his brother. And let's see what, what he says now. This is verse, uh, Genesis 33, verses 1 through 4. Let's skip a little bit of filler. 8 to 10. And Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, Esau was coming, and four hundred men with him. So he divided the children among Leah, Rachel, and the two female servants, and he put the servants with their children in front of them. Then Leah and her children, and Rachel and Joseph last of all. He himself went on before, bowing himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. But Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him, and they wept. Esau said, why do you mean, 
Or what do you mean by all this company that I met? Jacob answered, To find favor in the sight of my Lord. And Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. Jacob said, No, please. If I have found favor in your sight, then accept my present from my hand. For I have seen your face, which is like seeing the face of God, and you have accepted me. Jacob went from fearing his brother, and when he had that mental picture in his head, he saw the man that wanted to kill him, and he was afraid of that. He meets God. He encounters him. He sees the face of God in this man, and it changes his perspective so much that when he sees his brother and he's looking into his face, it's like he's looking into the face of God, the person that had his life in his hands. His, his whole demeanor, which leads us into point three, his demeanor went from a, a, a spirit of fear into a spirit of peace and of honor. And we can see that in how Jacob really interacted with his brothers during that meeting. Rightfully, Jacob had the birthright. Rightfully, he had the blessing. Because in those days, when they were given, they couldn't be given to anybody else. It was meant for the firstborn. It was meant for that. It was meant for Esau. But Jacob had it. And so he was afraid. He was afraid for his life. Because his brother rightfully <laughs> should be angry about what had happened, and he could have killed him. But Jacob moved from fear to peace and to honor. Seeing, instead of seeing the face of his brother, he sees the face of God within him. God brings everything together within order and harmony. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Galatians 3.28 Without God, the body is divided. Without God, the body is divided. Without the head, there is nothing for the rest of the body parts to do. They are just different things. But when we come under God, there's an order, there's a harmony, there's a peace that comes upon the body. Our nation, the world, is being torn apart by tribalism and what is happening uh, politically, socially, even religiously, and any other type of area that you can think of, people are being divided. And The image of God, the image of God, and who, how we see people, that's what is the big change. That's the big difference. When we see God, when we love one another, our world, how we act, how we operate within it begins to change. I want you to take a moment and imagine, close your eyes, close your eyes and imagine this. What our world would look like? What would our world look like? If when we looked at people, we see the face of God, we see their intrinsic value, we see them for who God has made them to be, who God has created them to be. Not who we judge them to be or who we think they are, but who they really are. If you can imagine that with me, it's such a powerful image of what our world could look like. The peace that our world could have, the love that our world could have. This is what God commands of us all. He commands this of us. 
Jesus left us with the two greatest commandments. Point four is to love God and to love other people. Love God, love other people. John 13, verse 34 and 35 says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. God's glory is shown, it's shown through people as they love and honor each other as they love and honor each other, no matter what the circumstances are, no matter what the circumstances are. 1 Peter 4, 8 says that, Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sin. No matter what the circumstances are, no matter what the background is of somebody else, when we see the face of God within them, when we see their value, we choose to love unconditionally. It covers everything that they've done. It changes the way that you're going to act towards that person. It's going to change the way that you deal with the person. It's going to change this lens, this lens of looking at the world through, through God and through the image of God. It'll change the way that you live your life. Now, I challenge you, I challenge you this morning to change your perspective, to change the way that you view people, change the way that you look at them, that you look at a person's value for who God created them to be, not for who you think they are, for who they really are, that they are a child of God, that they're fearfully and wonderfully made, born and made in the image of God. And now when you see them, you see God's face. You see their value. And you choose to love unconditionally, covering up their mistakes, covering up their successes if you're jealous of them, but choosing to love. It's a challenge for you, a challenge for me, that we do this together. And we show people the glory of God as we love one another. Even though that somebody may do harm to us or bad to us, that we still choose to look at the value that they have, no matter what. This is the way that we look at a person the way that we look at a person, the perspective that we have is going to greatly influence the way that we react and we respond and we treat the people in this world, people closest to us, our enemies, our friends, coworkers, whoever it may be, it's going to change the way that you interact with them. I guarantee it. If you take this challenge to heart, it, it will transform the way that you see this world. It will transform the way that you see people. And God's going to put a love in your heart for people. And he's going to use you to reach those people. I truly believe that. If God, if God, Jesus, felt that every single person on this earth was worth dying for, that tells you the value of who, who we are, the value that we have as human beings, as people. Even yet, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, he chose to pay the price for you and for me. Because you and I are worthy of it in his eyes. We're valuable in his eyes. And so when we can look at people, we can see the value that God has placed upon us in each and every single one around us. It's going to change the way that we act. It's going to change the way that we see things. And our world is going to change, but it starts with you. It starts with me. And so I'll leave you with that. I hope you've been blessed this morning. Uh, if you'd bow your heads and uh, pray with me.
Uh, but before we do that, uh, I'd like to just kind of read a little bit of a, I just remembered this, I read a little bit of a letter that was written uh, by a monk in Algeria. He was, he was doing work for the Lord there. And a group of Islamic uh, radicalists found out and was on their way to kill him and everybody there. And so he writes this letter in anticipation of his death and he talks about uh, his joys and what God has done. And he writes it to his families. And then right at the end, he, he begins to write to his would-be killer, the person that is going to take his life. And this is what he says. And you also, the friend of my final moment, who would not be aware of what you are doing. Yes, for you also, I wish this. Thank you. And this adieu, to commend you to the God whose face I see in yours. And may we find each other happy, good thieves in paradise, if it pleases God, the Father of us both. Amen. And that's such an amazing picture of somebody who knew that his life was going to end, that was going to be taken by somebody. And he writes this letter, this portion of his letter, directly to the person that was going to kill him and says that I, even you, yes, even you, I say thank you. And that, I, that we find each other as good thieves, friends in heaven, in paradise. And so, the challenge to you and to me, let's change our perspective. Let's look at people. Let's look at the world through the lens of God, through the face of God, with that perspective in mind. And each and every person's intrinsic value on our hearts and at the forefront of our minds. And let's, let's just live our lives like that. And let's see God move and transform us. Amen. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much that you saw the value within us, that you created us with value. That is so important to you that you would come to earth and you would die and pay the ultimate price and the sacrifice for my life, for our lives. And we pray that this morning marks a marks a line in the cement, or not just a line in the sand that can be easily wiped and moved, but a line in the cement that we want to change our perspective and the way that we see people for the rest of our lives. That when we look at a person, no matter who they are, that when we see them, we see your face, we see their intrinsic value, and we treat them with love and honor. As, our, as the love that you have for us and the love that grows in our heart begins to cover the sins, the multitude of sins that a person has done. The unconditional love that, that, you, that you challenge us to have to each and every person. But we thank you. We thank you, Lord for what you're doing in our lives, for what you're doing in this world. Pray for an outpouring of your spirit, of your peace upon this nation, upon our world, upon our city, upon this church, upon our families. Or to rise up For your kingdom, not for any kingdom or any purpose of this world, but strictly your kingdom. And to be about your business, about sharing your gospel, about making disciples, and loving each other. 
So we thank you for this opportunity uh, to come before you and to be able to dive into the word together. Lord, we honor you and we bless you. Bless each and every person that is watching this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hope you have a great day.